one of the major conglomerates in the but uh, Swiss conglomerate. This is true. Oh, <laughs> he got you. Nah, it's nothing. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about diving of Seikos. Not talking about your homage copies. Non Swiss movement, finally. Non Swiss design, and not from a conglomerate that owns other Swiss watches. Jason, yeah. mm. Go on, don't you clap? Sure. Yeah, actually. Hello and welcome to episode six. So let's kick off with a little wrist check. Elliot. What are we doing today? We do that after. We do that after. Wrist check. <laughs> I mean, right. There's a reason. He's Stop. already starting to s up. Man, well, we said we were going to do anything but Swiss, so yeah. I thought, of course, we can't wear Swiss watch today, can we? No, we can't. We can't. It's no, impossible. we can't. It'd be stupid. It'd be we really were. dumb if someone was. On the one watch. episode where we're not supposed to. So I decided to wear an old Vostok that I got recently. Uh, I love collecting them. They're very cheap watches to get, to be honest, and they're quite fun. Um, That's it, really. Not much to it. Nice little green dial. Cool. Indestructible. That's it. Very cool. Oh, Very up. Nice. Yep, uh, I did the same thing. I didn't take a Swiss watch. So right now I'm wearing my brew watch and I bought it just before actually I got a, a, a promoted and I got a teaching job uh, at a, at a university like at NUS. I love the flash of color on the inside of the diamond. Oh, it's so cool. It is very nice. And so for the quick history, I got it because I wanted to be able to time my students and the timer here is an increment of uh, 10 minutes. So it's perfect 10 minutes for them to present, 10 minutes for them to yeah, talk. And I would use this to do yeah, this, awesome. like all of them. But the difference is, what I loved about the story of this is the espresso part, so the coffee part, mm. where the colors actually indicate when the perfect time it is to have your espresso made. And so that I love that voice. moment during the day where I have my coffee. I do it religiously every day at the same time, 3.30, I get my coffee. And if I have this on, it kind of makes me remember. And we've tested that with my gadget. Really. Um, with some coffee roasted through, and uh, yeah, 12 seconds works really well. So I have got today, um, uh, yeah, a moon swatch. Um, and uh, Not a swatch. Yeah, what an incredible um, uh, buzz for when it came out. You know, we were queuing in stores for ages. We thought it was an absolutely brilliant idea. Um, and uh, it, of course, clearly, we all love the Amiga dial, um, and I think the collaboration is superb. Um, however, I think I wore it about two or three days, and then a little plastic sort of, you know, bit, um, wind a bit came off, so I've got half a chronograph. Um, and literally, I wear my watches really lightly, so I think that was a little bit disappointing. And I thought, now they've come out with the Blancpain. Um, and I remember we went, we went to see, um, we went to see the uh, store, of course, where they only had the display and, and none actually to buy. Two great big bouncers in the front there, so you couldn't get anywhere near it. And then, then we went into Breitling that had, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds of watches and just opened the door and were really sweet. So um, I think really disappointing for me. Um, would I spend the money on the Blancpain, knowing in mind that, you know, I'm underwater and would I really need it? And if the thing drops off, perhaps not. So that's why we've called this episode Anything But Swiss. ABS. So we've got three of those legendary watches. We've got the Rolex Daytona from Paul Newman that relay, and we've got the Nautilus Tiffany, and we've got the Blancpain. 50 fathoms. 50 fathoms. <laughs> Air Command. Let's see how the episode rolls. Okay, so Elliot, Rolex Daytona, Paul Newman, a small we'll snippet at 200,442 pounds. For that sweet, yeah, but, yeah, but it's a very old. Price. What are you it's bringing? Just a random one. What are you bringing? Some of them are 100 rand, some of them are 200. It's, it's also uh, it's the most expensive wristwatch ever sold. What did it hit? Five million, five million, fifteen million, even. I can't remember actually. But all three of the watches they're representing today uh, are part of the Swiss industry in, in the larger sense, and mm. they go for ridiculous prices, right? So we were just talking about the fact that uh, Omega and Swatch had a collaboration and produced a watch. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Omega went further and did it with Blancpain. Uh, sorry, Swatch did it uh, with Blancpain. And the Nautilus Tiffany was mm -hmm. in the rage at some point. It was just a change in variation in a, a watch from Patek Philippe and it made uh, the whole world, entire world crazy for this color called Tiffany Blue. And then finally, the Rolex Daytona, which was the most expensive yeah. watch. So look, what can we do to replace it? Is there anything that's outside of the Swiss world 
that kind of can be an alternative to these watches and also probably an alternative price wise mm -hmm. dividing you know the price of these things by 10 or 100 yeah or i'm not i think it's going to be pretty easy to find cheap alternatives to these watches well okay so, so there's the challenge for the daytona i think there's nothing closer than a daytona then this <laughs> This is a uh, Seiko okay. did a collaboration in Japan. This is a Japan only thing with Nano Universe, which is some clothing brand. Uh, there's a reference number, I'm not going to say it. And they did two models a Cream Dial, which is like a real human, mm -hmm. and then a Panda Dial. And I mean, of course, they took homage to the, to the Paul Newman. You can clearly see it's basically a blatant copy of it. And yeah, it was $250, I think. Why, why are we killing it? Which is great. Strap Japanese. Oh, you got Mecha Quartz movement. But it's so it's a homage and, watch. Uh, mm. No, it's this fashion brand chose these colors, but for sure they there was some inspiration to the Bonium. I mean, with these colors, I mean it's exactly the same <laughs> colors. Yeah, it's yes. the 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 white sub dials with the black dial with the red text. Yeah. But it's not two hundred thousand pounds. It's two hundred quid. <laughs> ah, if, if your alternative to a Swiss watch is a watch that it's looks to like copy a Swiss the Swiss watch, watch. it's a Swiss. Uh, it's a Swiss. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same Swiss watch. Yeah, but, but how many cheaper? Watches, but how many watches have just come as a basically a plain copy of the Daytona? Basically, every single chronograph from that point mm. on has had some kind of aspect following. Yeah, there's inspiration, and then there's blatant copy. You know? Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. I think that does virtually. I think I did blatant very cover. Much <laughs> did we say? Did we say? It, it's not supposed to be in terms of. In terms we, of say, we, said, we just said an alternative. In, terms, an alternative. Of, in terms of early money, you've got it. an alternative. You, you, you pay 200 quid yeah. and you get yeah, a great Japanese to go down the road. Why don't I just go to AliExpress and buy a Chinese watch that looks exactly okay, the same? Okay, so oh, right, okay. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess the point is if the original wasn't made, then they wouldn't be able to come up with that. So I think, um, I think we do need to kind of think outside the box more. Come on, Max. All right, <laughs> well, uh, Let's see how many homages you have. All right, yeah. so this is a British alternative to buying your Rolex Daytona, Paul Newman. I wanted something that was still vintage, still in the era of the 1970s, mm -hmm. much, 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 much more affordable, but from a brand that still has enough importance to be interesting. And I think it's one of the watches from this brand that has gone under the radar. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anyone where I haven't seen very many reviews about it online, but to me, I think it's one of my favorite designs in the catalogue. And that is mm -hmm. the Christopher Ward C65 chronograph. Uh, um, can we just talk about one thing first? Yeah. Where's the movement from? <laughs> Switzerland. Switzerland. <laughs> ABS. It's anything but Swiss, and you bring out a basically a Swiss watch. But uh, most watches. <laughs> and yeah, that's the problem. If really most of the watches globally, uh, movements are made in Swiss. Yeah, but so you attack me for my thing, which is purely <laughs> not Swiss, and you bring out a watch which is Swiss. And the watch is not Swiss. It's Swiss movement. The Swiss movement, movement is is, but everything else is British. Yeah, the design is British. Great British design. It's like yeah, Apple yeah, yeah, yeah. saying, um, you know, design in California. California it's manufactured in China. In well. Taiwan. Yeah. Exactly. The whole yeah. thing's made in China. Well, you might have made a good point. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's the same to compare at least to the watch that you presented. Isn't that a cool design? Isn't that yeah, a cool take cool on a, a 1970s? Uh, uh, and it's water resistance to 150 meters, which is crazy. So That's same it. idea, screw down the crown. Uh, there's some references of the, 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 the Rolex Daytona does no. have, have that. Um, and I love the accent of orange on it. I love that the, the sub dials have a little bit of color. And again, there's more orange there. Even just a little, there's little... There's little elements that, that really make it pop. Like if you can see the tacky meters are slightly different color and there's a little oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's inside detail video. that comes kind of into cool. it. I could strap this up with you know, a rubber blue FKM strap and I think it would just be one of the but you best. See, you have the saturation watches. time there of what you're supposed to wait before the nitrogen in your, when you're scuba diving, the nitrogen in your blood. You've got that, which is a nice knob, but it's only 150 uh, um, meters. Uh, uh, now, and I wouldn't, scuba, I wouldn't scuba with anything that's less than two, 200. You can take a shower of it. You can take a shower of it. Really, like it. really useful when you need to let the nitrogen out of your organ. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, I'm Good successful. call. Not switch. Swiss movement. Got caught. Um, and I'm going to fall into exactly the same trap. Because uh, here is my uh, 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 nod to the Rolex uh, Daytona. And that is the Bamford. Um, and this is my um, Michelin Bamford. Uh, 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 
I mean, just a stunning watch. Um, uh, it's got a mono pusher. Um, the tires are actually from um, the race. They are um, they are Michelin tires, the Pilot Sport Five um, uh, uh, actual race tires. Um, I think it's a stunning watch. I do think it's going to have uh, that amazing um, Swiss movement in there, which probably kicks that's, it that's out. Not the point of the, the carbon fiber. I the carbon fiber. I think um, you know, uh, really nice car reserve. Um, and you know, the serial number of this is 007. So um, I'm putting that down as a, a a very affordable alternative. Very rare. Um, there's only 133 pieces. 133 years since the Michelin started, um, and it's very unusual to see oh, okay. the Michelin man actually on the back of the strap. And for all the time working in Michelin star restaurants, yeah, I think that has a quite a, a soft spot um, to my heart. And, and uh, you know, of course, George Bamford is the British Paul Newman. No. Right. <laughs> uh, I get the idea. Paul Newman was a racer. The Royal mm, yeah. Daytona is for, for tracking races. And uh, what is more synonymous than there Michelin? Are. It's yeah. true. I'll give you that. It's very cool. But that was my movement. But anyway. I don't, again, I, I, I don't think... Movement is as important as design in this one. But the episode is called anything but Swiss. It's in the name, mate. It's, it's in the name. <laughs> okay. But it's a very good coronal one. Okay. Very nice racing coronal, I would say. Okay, so let's let's, let's move up to another one of these uh, truly am am amazingly, um, completely uh, unaffordable watches made out of unobtainium. Mm. It is the Nautilus Tiffany uh, that last went for a very, very mere £2,108,253. So, um, what a bit ridiculous. Elliot, what have we got now in terms of uh, Nautilus Tiffany? So, here's what I chose for comparison. I mean, everyone's doing these steel integrated bracelets, real watches, and everyone's doing them. You have the T. Tissot's doing it, uh, Christopher Ward's doing it, absolutely everyone's doing it. Mine's not Tiffany, but it doesn't matter. Did you buy one? No. What? Buy what? Breakfast you? Tiffany. No. I have a piece of paper now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Not right, that rich. So my comparison, which is not Swiss, is from a brand in Germany. Like, ah. so this is, is, the, is the other six. So Max, told him, Max, um, who owns Lemon Sum? Themselves, is they're independent. Uh, really? uh, I don't think they are. I think they're owned nope. by uh, Richwan. Um, we'll yeah. fact check this on the screen. So, uh, yeah. one of the major conglomerates in the. In but, the, uh, Swiss conglomerates. This is true. Ooh, <laughs> he got you. Nah, it's nothing. It makes if sense. he's right, which I'm not sure he is, but if he is right. But no, then that's not going to be a great way to Swiss. the end. It doesn't make any sense. This is pure German engineering. What do you mean their bosses are Swiss? Doesn't matter if their boss is Swiss. Their boss is Swiss. It's still, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it changes nothing. Anyway, this is a really great. Uh, integrated bracelet steel watch. I think it's really fantastic. It's got loads of micro adjustments, 120 meters of water resistance, and it's it takes its own. 120. Yeah, it's very strange measurement, yeah. but anyway, that's the German for you. Um, <laughs> please cut that out. No, <laughs> I'm going to lose my job. Uh, the thing is, all these brands who do these steel blue uh, watches, it seems to me it's always kind of the same. It's it's always just free handers with all the same kind of style and also the same. Except here, I think they really did a different kind of approach. With the dates flicking on the, you got that on the left and you got the, the days of the month on the right. And I think it just, it just looks fantastic. It's really different to all the other and pieces. As a, honestly, as a credible alternative to a Swiss watch, Long & Sun do some simply amazing pieces. And if you look at the movements and the finishing that they do, it's on Paradise, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's just amazing. I'm not, I'm not in love with the Odysseus, is that? Uh, yeah. I'm not in love with it, if I'm honest. I think certain languages give that me that, taste. wow, the, the Zate work gives me that, yeah. uh, the, the chronographs give me that. What is this? Is this, is this a, it's not a diving watch, it's not a field watch, is it a dress watch? It feels it's a sports quite, watch. Feels cool. It's a sports watch? It's the same as the, as the Nautilus. It doesn't have, the Nautilus doesn't have 300 meters of water resistance, that's for sure. Probably has 100. That's the whole point. But it's just integrated bracelet, blue dial, sporting. Yeah. You could wear this for a run. I love this watch. I don't think I'd ever go scuba diving with it. That's not the point. These are sport the watches. You can. These are not no, diving watches. Quite sweet. Um, I do think it's a very credible alternative. You know about diving in an Nautilus. Nautilus. Well, but the, how it compares to a Rolex, sorry, um, an Olympia Piguet, these aren't integrated. 
think there's something a little bit lost, uh, no? How? Well, if I'm thinking about the, the Nautilus, it's an integrated strap, it's part of it. If I'm thinking about the Royal Oakins integrated, this is an integrated, it doesn't give me the same, the same feeling as that category. <laughs> Meaning it's one part attached to. That's pretty integrated to me. I can see the pins. Doesn't matter, it integrates into the case, so... Fine, fair enough. It's not a bad choice. I just, I'm just uh, uh, don't know that Bad one. taste. Anyway, Swiss group. So, after your little Swiss group watch, let's talk about my um, uh, nod to the Nautilus. Okay. Um, and here's a watch uh, that... Uh, I just want to, oh, yeah. Can yeah. I just purely point out um, uh, for for the viewers, and particularly for my wife, yeah. um, that uh, uh, Elliot has spent the most money on a single watch than any yeah, hey. of the three presenters today. Thank you. So, here we have a oh. Citizen Tiffany Blue, a uh, Japanese, Japanese movement. Um, citizen um, Tiffany Blue, a uh, really it's nice colour. Uh, you've got to say, um, it's a quite a pleasant finish, um, uh, although it's not the prettiest movement, it's open. So, uh, it's horrible you can movement, see, you can see the, the, the movement at the back, um, but you've got a really, I think, a really, really smart, uh, wonderful, sort of almost dress watch, day watch. Um, and I think that the, the great part about Citizen is, is um, you know, in terms of that for a Tiffany Blue watch, clearly you can admire the nuances of the Nautilus um, Tiffany. However, is it really worth 7,000 times the price of that particular watch? Because that will retail brand right. new for around £300. Yeah. Uh, and so, therefore, is it 7,000? Now, you know, I've been really lucky to taste a few really great wines that have, you know, been a couple of grand a bottle and, again, the same philosophy, great to taste them. But there are wines around, the, you know, 50 to 100 pounds that are yeah. sometimes just as good as those that are tasting, costing around a 1,000. And I think that's a lovely example how the wash didn't sure, get carried it. away. For 300 pounds, um, that certainly isn't 7,000 times worse than the, you know, Nautilus Tiffany. And the bracelet is not that bad, actually. It's a nice-looking bracelet that also integrates to the case. And it, I think it just looks really good. It's, the only thing is the movement is atrocious. But other than that, it's a nice watch. For the price, it's hard to beat, to be honest. What do you think? How many watches have you bought? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. And I'm back to our original point. No, your point makes no sense. But uh, no, very, very, very cool. I was actually very close to getting this as one of the watches for... So, uh, so you're the last episode, the, the, the rainbow watch. But I just I just didn't go for it uh, because I have never had it in the flesh. No, having it in the flesh. Yeah. That was the job. It really. I like the heft of it. It feels heavy. It doesn't feel yeah. insignificant. It doesn't feel like a, a watch that you would get in an airport. If you know what I mean. It does feel like something that has a little bit more value than that. Sapphire glass stainless steel bracelet, three hundred pounds. I think that's what. No, what a great what a great buy for a, for, a, for a Tiffany blue. Yeah. All right, Max. Let's see your Swiss Altos. My Swiss for knowing you comes from Germany. <laughs> mm. Okay. When you think about German watchmaking, I think two brands come to mind usually. It's Normos Glashut and Alain Gazon. Alain Gazon is for that top, top tier. Let's try to beat Patek, although arguably mm -hmm. it's conversation itself. Are they better at finishing their movements and decoration, etc.? And the other one is Normos Glashut, where you wanting the, the the love and care and attention and detail that you get from a, mm. a linger, but at a way lower cost. They make that in-house movement, mm. beautiful. But there's an in-between that people don't go towards. What do you think that in-between is? Between the Chateau Original? The Chateau Original. And that's what I decided to pick. You'll have to excuse the, the quality of the yeah. image. This is the Clash Chateau Original 70s Chronograph Panorama Date. And you can get this for 13,000 euros. Do you know who owns Glass Chute Original? Ah, oh, it's the Swiss. Could it be the Swatch? Yeah, but that changes nothing. It doesn't mean who Is owns it, it makes it Swiss. Yeah. Swatch! Along with Hamilton, Longines, Mido, Omega, <laughs> Rato, Blanc, yeah, Pat, Reggae, Is Cicina, that a list Blanche that you Gisson. wrote? <laughs> it is indeed all of the you Swatch. You was ready. You was ready. I was oh, ready no for way. this. I was up and ready. Didn't know what you were bringing up, but I knew you'd fall into the trap. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that it's owned by Swiss. That's it's a Swiss watch. Yeah, it's still... German engineer. Yeah, German you know, if I, if I took the mickey out of you yeah. for having yeah. a watch that looks like a Swiss watch, and, and then yeah. me... No, you definitely lose. And so, thus, the winner of the entire episode has to be... <laughs> no, we didn't let it. Just to finish on, this watch 
give something really, really fantastic in terms of the dial. I think that when you look at the Tiffany blue, like it's a shade of blue, but with no depth and no color. What I love about these more fume mm. dials that Germany does so, so, so yeah. well is that there's a lot more character to these watches. And when you turn them around and in the sun, you get a lot They're more. They're great watchmakers, but that looks like a smartwatch. Okay. I think it's horrendous. <laughs> I'd rather it look like a smart watch. I think it's horrendous. I, like the, I do like the way the crown is protected. I do think that that's always, that's always quite... Yeah, that's pretty, always pretty, pretty good. It's quirky. It's 70s. So that's a sports watch. Or a lower bracelet. I would say... Well, all the criticism I gave about your watch goes to this one. <laughs> right? it's it's thing. It's not you're the, running with your, your uh, leather strap. You're going to take a shower. You're not going anywhere. Yeah. That's right. I think all my complaints. You tried, so that's the, no, that's the that one. Part. Yeah, you had a go. You yeah, had, had a go. go. You had a you go. Know, a I'll accept, I'll accept the on this one. But <laughs> get ready for the blob down 15. Yeah, you the show. Because I think I'm bringing okay. something special. Eddie, yeah. what are you bringing? For the blob? Okay, so is my alternative. So, as I showed you my restaurants, I went Russian here. So, I picked the, the Vosta as a thing, yeah? So, here's one I got, which is the Vosta Kamalyevsky. And you got it in GMT. There's just under 24 hour hand, and then you can set the second time zone with the bezel itself. And when Vostok were making their watches, uh, it was basically mainly just for the army and commanders, was the main uh, amount they were doing. And I think it was in the 60s or so, they, they started with the uh, Vostok. And the whole point was to make an alternative, a cheap alternative. And this was in their words to the Blomp by 50 fathoms and the Rolex of Marriott. Oh, really? So this was actually what they were trying to do. So, I mean, I have the one on my wrist as well. So, double Vostok there. One actually older and one newer from about like the, the 90s or... Now, did the, you buy any of them, your pal from Ukraine? Uh, are those from him? No, no these are not from me. This I like that story. He was buying watches from this fellow in Ukraine. Um, during the conflict, and he just kept sending and buying, sending, and that's a great yeah. banter with him, uh, which I thought was yeah. admirable. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so, yeah, really good watches. The really fun stuff that they do, which is really different, for example, they have a very flimsy crowns. That's something they do on Vostok. And they say the reason for that is to, if you bash them in, it won't really break the stem because it's, mm. it's wobbly. And also, their case designed for going deep diving for pressure. They don't manufacture the case to be able to pressurize it. They let the water pressurize the case itself. So with the deeper you go the watch, it actually closes its seals, mm. and that's what gives it the water seal. Mm. So I think that's my alternative. It's pure Russian, really cheap. You can get these under 200 quid, mm. basically for all of them. And yeah. Yeah, Food. eBay's a haven for these things. Yeah. You could find them from anything from 20 pounds to 200 pounds for the best quality ones. Mm. For full original. You could uh, genuinely create the argument that if someone wanted to have a, a one type of watch collection they could go fully Vostok yeah they could go fully Vostok amphibian they could go fully Vostok with their other side quite easy. yeah definitely one so really good so two Russian watches um, from here Max come on through show us your latest Swiss so my alternative to a Swiss watch which is the Blanc Bar 50 Fathoms which, as we talked about, is this iconic watch in terms of one of the first divers that was ever created. I believe at the same time of his release in the 1950s, you saw Zodiac have their Seawolf, Zoom mm -hmm. Seawolf coming out yep. from, from Rolex have their watch coming out. Below Pap 50 Thalons, as we were talking about, is one of these iconic watches. It's so important to have a watch, if we're going to replace it, that has that same iconicism, that same importance, the same value, and that same likability. I think in general. And I decided to go Japanese with this one. Mm -hmm. And Seiko is this one brand that provides so many amazing alternatives to buying a Switch diving watch. After you diss mine, yeah. Mm -hmm. After you diss my Seiko, yeah. Which Seiko? The first one I was talking about. Better than the oh, yeah. I'm talking about diving with Seikos. <laughs> Not talking about your homage <laughs> copies. And ones with real design, so the design that comes from Japan, we can think about the Seiko Tuna, we can think about the Seiko Turtle, we can think about the Seiko SKX. I wanted to take one that has a lot of history, which is the Captain Willard. Now, the Captain Willard, I didn't see this movie in total fairness, but it got its name from a character in Apocalypse Now, mm -hmm. uh, this iconic movie. This was a watch, to me, more importantly, that was worn in the 1970s by a Japanese explorer called Naomi Uemura who was the first person to climb five 
of the highest peaks of each five continent, which I think is <laughs> really cool. If you're going to get something where it's not only getting to the top of the, the, the mountain, it's getting mm -hmm. to the top of the mountain of every single of the highest mountains yeah. in the world. It's really, really impressive. And this watch, I believe, inspired models all around the world to use this hand right here. This hand, mm -hmm. this second hand is so iconic. I've seen so many watches implement it in their own designs, and it comes from this originally. And there's something about it that's so utilitarian and tool-like, yeah. as was the Blotta 50,000s back in the day, maybe not nowadays, but this is my anything but Swiss alternative, and it's a non-Swiss movement, finally, non-Swiss design, and not from <laughs> a conglomerate that owns other Swiss watches. So, totally, 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 totally ABS. Okay, so finally, um, whilst I think that's a, a really lovely watch, um, and whilst I thought yours was a good, credible watch, does it have that wow factor? Does it have that absolute breath of take going, <gasps> surprise, amazing thing when you pull out a watch? You pull out another watch. So I watch picked watch. Christopher Ward. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the Bremer. Um, and it's a U2, uh, that wonderful deep blue um, dial. Um, this is one tough, tough watch. This is um, designed to withstand of shooting up um, from a jet. And in fact, if you just happen to press the ejector seat, I think Bron will give you a free watch. Um, so I'll be looking to do that next time. I'm up in the air. Um, uh, DLC, diamond hull coated. Um, inside, it's got some incredible shock absorbing um, stuff. And I, I love the story of Bremont when they, uh, um, you know, they flew over and they, they crash landed in France and... Uh, uh, and uh, of course someone helped them this old farmer helped them and got them back and blah 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 um, and of course his name was Bremont which is where they named it which is um, maybe unique marketing but really really does add to a real depth and that's you work for I, them as well I absolutely I could do I would sounds love like, to work for Bremont sounds like you want I would I would have their um, uh, the the um, uh, the, the first ever plague zoomer with the right on the back there. Oh, right, um, right, right. I, I would have a number of their yeah, watches. These prices are absurd. Um, I would have a number of their watches. I think they do an amazing job. Yes, Swiss movements, um, but the British design and just, this is one tough watch. And I also think it has got that well factor. You're putting that next to a Blancpain. That is a breathtaking, um, uh, truly, truly um, watch that you go, wow. This is very well watch. The good marketing speech. Yeah, <laughs> should work for them. <laughs> so this, this can go diving? That's what's incredible about this watch. Not only can it go up in the sky, but it can go down underneath as well. This is for absolutely adventures on the other side. Actually, the nice knob is only 150 so, um, meters. Uh, uh, um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't scoop with anything that's less than two, 200. So, uh, you compare, uh, 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 so, so, so we're talking, comparing this to a Blancpain. Right, 50 fathoms, which is known to go very, very deep, deep underwater. underwater. And you pick the and this has. Uh, 10 atmospheres of pressure. That's so it. you can basically That's wash your hands of it. So for everyone at home, 10 atmos. So when you turn at the back of a watch, you might get a certain number that explains the depth rating. 10 atmos means 100 meters water rating. Now, although it is 100 meters, generally you don't want to go diving, properly diving, if anything that is not above 200, 200. meters or 20 atmos. Or so quad error demonstrandum, dos. <laughs> so, so this is where I, this is where in two times. This is where viewers, I pull out my Joker. On my Joker here at the top, it says Blancpain Air Commando, sixteen thousand five hundred pounds. Here's the wonderful, credible alternative to the Blancpain Air Command. I rest my case. Thanks for my Joker. Episode is mine. Did you present yours? Yeah. It's a wrap, guys. Yeah, it was your second last time. It's a wrap, guys. Okay. I think having three watches each was a long, long episode, but my word, it's a lot of fun. There's some great ideas there. Give us your comments. Give us any questions. Like, subscribe, and more. Thank you. See you again next episode. Bye-bye.